that we're one big machine. So if yeah. one system is dysregulated, it's going to impact every other system. So, you know, if we have gut issues, as I said, that can that can cause hormonal issues. Hormonal issues can impact the gut. It all, it all activates the stress response. It impacts our ability to detoxify. Therefore, we could have more buildup of chemicals and things. So you've got to look at the body as a whole. You know, some people say, well, it's obviously just, your th- I've got it. And I have, I have clients that say this, it's my thyroid, my thyroid's out of whack that's why i can't lose weight i just need to fix my thyroid i'm like well it's not your thyroid that's the problem no. your thyroid is just reacting. a regulator yeah. and it's reacting to the environment so what's impacting your thyroid yeah. so then you've got to go through all these things so so what's the solution to yeah. all of this steve <laughs> hey guys welcome to the atp project you're with your hosts steve and nick you know you're gonna laugh steve i'm going to because i thought you were gonna laugh oh, no i held it together this time oh, i would have held it together but i looked at you and you were laughing so <laughs> you messed it up for me steve again oh, no that's Can't all right you, that was a pretty good intro that's pretty thanks, good intro because I, I, I want to talk about today's topic it's really cool yeah we are talking about everybody really cool. gets this Everyone gets it. Everyone goes through Well, nearly everyone yeah. will, will go through it. A lot of people struggle with it. I a lot know. of people try to find an easy way out of it. And a lot of people struggle trying to do it the right way and still doesn't work. I know. <laughs> what are we talking I about? Know. What are we talking about? It, it's, it's one of those things like this is the, this is the scenario. This is, so think of this as a story. Let's say I'm overweight and I've been seeing a naturopath like you, Nicole Brown Naturopathy. I went to see you and you've given me this great program. And I'm losing about a kilo, a half kilo a week. Next week's two kilos. Next week, half kilo. And then it goes down to zero kilos and then zero kilos and zero kilos. And I might lose half. And then I'll put on a half. So I've plateaued. Mm. Now, everyone's heard that term plateau. Yeah. Now, plateauing can be when you're building muscle too. But we're talking today about plateauing in weight loss. We are. So we're going to give you five reasons yeah. you may not be losing weight or, mm. you know, you're struggling to lose maybe the last five or 10 kilos or you're, you're dieting and you're not getting anywhere. Nothing's mm. happening whatsoever. No. Um, and look, I'm going to debunk, because this is one of my irks, Steve, is going it? around social media, a lot of the high profile fitness and influencers say it's all about calories in, calories out. Oh my God. Does my Do they still in, say that? literally still say that there's a very prominent person that we talk about a lot outside of here yeah. um you know who i'm talking about that ma- male that we talk about oh, he it, says it really yeah, he says i it. thought he was very scientist. he's a scientist yeah okay yeah, yeah just to debunk that a sec like okay, calorie in okay let's, let's just take protein for example mm. that is a thermic effect of 15 percent. so in other words it increases your metabolism by 15 percent. so even though if you take the same calories of something like just oil mm. compared to that which doesn't have a thermic effect you're already blowing that that thing out of the the, the, the water. Yeah, already. You're already. I know there's many other reasons. Yeah, there's many other reasons. Some of which we're going to talk about. But the thing is that these people aren't clinicians. Ah. A lot of them are researchers, right? So researchers work on the law of averages. Yeah. That's what a lot of the a lot of research studies are. Not individualized. They don't no. account for all the different elements that could impact the, the what what the person is going through. I see people who struggle with these things. So. The, a lot of these fitness specialists that say yeah. it's purely calories in, calories out, and they berate people if they say, well, you're talking, you know, out of your butt. You're not obviously not counting your calories properly and all of that sort of thing. They don't see people that come to us with conditions or issues that we're going to talk about today that significantly impact your ability to lose weight. Of course. No matter if you are just, you know, and I'm talking about people who are dieting to the letter, um, you know, doing all the right things, um, exercising and they're not getting anywhere. But even like if you, if you were back in the twenties, mm-hmm. like when I was a kid, nineteen twenties, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you know, if you took diphenol two uh, four diphenol, um, you know, not nitro diphenol, which is a, a potent um, catabolic agent, yes, and increases thermogenesis, banned now. Yeah. Super duper fat loss. That's going to do with calories in and the calories out. No. If, if 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 you and I were doing the same calories and I was on that drug, I would lose significantly more weight, like two kilos a week. That's right. Um, and so that just blows that out of the water a hundred years ago. Yeah. So they're still on about this. They're stuff. still on about. It. So yeah. So there's there's a lot more going on physiologically mm-hmm. that's going to impact our ability to lose weight and calories in, calories out does not come into play when we have these underlying issues. No. So, you and know, we're, we're going to talk about PPAR today, aren't we? Yeah, we're going to talk about all sorts of things. That's the chemicals and, yeah, and, and different. AMK and all this crap. Yeah. But, but these are all things that, that, that make you individual. Yeah. And make you different to the person next to you that's having different calories in, different calories out. Yeah, that's right. We're going to talk about sex hormones today. Yeah, sex hormones. In fact, I can give you a sex hormone that will make you fat. 
Yes. And I can make give myself one and it'll make me fat. That's right. But if I give you my hormone, it'll make you thinner. That's right. Isn't that amazing? Yes. So we're, we're, this whole, you know, this whole calories in, calories out thing is, is just rubbish. It, it, it does my head in. And, it, it, <sighs> and I see clients that are frustrated because I, but I'm doing all the right things. Yeah, and I, I know. say, well, there's obviously an underlying issue here mm. um, that we need to look at. So oh, absolutely it is. We're going to go through five oh, l- l- let's possible have, factors. Yeah, let's have a look be. at some of these, 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 these factors. And, and some of these here, I mean, I've had a quick look at what you've written here. It's absolutely mm. brilliant because it does go through all, all the different factors. But let's start at number one. All right. So number one is yeah. going to be a culmination. So we want to get the – I thought I'd just get these ones out yeah. of the way first because these are the ones that are people like, oh, but what about this? What about that? So this is a bit of a culmination. Yep. This isn't one specific thing um, that I hear a lot and that I see a lot. Yep. So um, chronic dieting. Yes. Very, very common. I see this yeah. a lot. So some, when I say chronic dieting, I mean somebody that's maybe been dieting for 20 years. Yo-yo is, dieting, yeah. trying every diet under the sun, mm. nothing works. Um, so that's very common. And obviously if you're, for one, not giving anything enough of a chance, which mm. I see a lot, someone might do something for two or three weeks and go, I haven't lost any weight. So mm. then they'll flip to the next thing and then flip to the next thing. Mm. That's never going to work. So yep. um uh, and obviously under eating. So if they're yes, dieting chronically, under eating, I see under eating a lot more than I see over eating. And wow. it's the whole mindset of I have to eat less and exercise more because mm. that's what we're told mm. through life. You just got to less going in and more going out and you'll lose weight. And that's just the, that's just and the that way could it is. work for some people, depending on what's going in and depending on what exercise they're doing going that's out. That's right. And there's the key. For example, yeah. you know, and just to help on that point, um, overtraining. Imagine if you trained like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Now, Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he's an old bodybuilder from the 70s, everyone knows him, but he was at the time overweight because he, he had loads of muscle. Yeah. The big yeah, bodybuilders well, today are very heavy men and yeah. women. They yeah. are overweight. Mm. So you actually go to the gym and you will put on weight. That's It'll right. It'll be muscle and everyone's happy with that. Yeah. But you'll put on weight. Yeah. Isn't exactly. incredible? Yeah, that's exactly right. right. What's the next one? Um, so I need to put my glasses on. So oh, I was I know going to try and go through again without glasses. The, ne- the next one's a classic. Yeah, so not logging everything you put in your mouth. Yes. <laughs> this is a classic one. So yeah. people who are... You know, they're really super strict and they're like, yes, but I, I eat really healthy and I diet and I'm dieting. and I'm, But, okay, so are you adding the sauces that you're putting on your food? Uh-huh. Are you adding the drink that you might be having, you know, like you might be having a latte or you might be have go out and have an alcoholic drink or something mm. like that? Um, cheat meals as someone goes, oh, yeah, but I'm, I'm dieting, but I'm, it's my cheat day. Oh, they don't add okay. those calories. So that could send you over... Three, four, five hundred calories a day, depending on what you're having. If you're having sauces and things like that, and that can make a massive difference. Like I ordered a salad, and let's say we're out for lunch, and I'm not ordered a salad, and you've got your maccas and chips, and I'll just pinch a few of your chips. Yeah. And it's like, well, how much is a few? What are you talking about? Yeah. And it's got the terrible fats in it, trans fats, which which screw up your metabolism anyway. So it's like, you know, and people don't count that. No, they don't. They'll splosh it in sugary sauce. Yeah, that sort of thing. And look, oh. we're not talking about you know restrictive calorie counting. It's not what we. It's not what this podcast is about. But no. this is just an example of some of the regular things that we see that we want to get out of the way. And if someone is counting calories and they say, "But I'm having fifteen hundred calories a day," which is very low, by the way. Yeah. But if you are, you could be having an extra three, four hundred calories a day on top of just with incidentals that you're not even logging. So that's pretty common sure. as well. So um, take those out, and you can actually see a massive difference. Right. What else? This is the classic, so I diet all week and then I splurge on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm super strict all week and I have my 1,800 or my 2,000 calories a day. Like, you know, mm. that's it. But then on the weekend I might go, okay, I'm going to go out for breakfast or I'm going to have dinner with friends or something. So you might blow out to say 3,000 calories on that day. Yeah. But then you don't factor that into the rest of the week's calories. So, so say you've got, you know, 10,000 calorie limit for the week mm. and you break that up. So people don't factor that weekend in. And that's pretty common as well. And that can definitely throw you off your your um, goals as well. So even just, a, you know, the old cheat meal. And I used to do it when I was competing or even previous and after. I'd have a cheat meal once a week, but it was a big cheat meal. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I was very lean, so it didn't seem to have too many problems, but it can do. So it mm. can definitely throw you over. So. Well, also it can store uh, carbohydrates in your body as glycogen yeah. and um, in your liver and your muscles. Mm. So then you, on Monday when you go to the gym, you're just going to burn that off. That's right. So you're not going to start back on your weight loss. You've got to burn that crap off that you've built up on the weekend. Yeah, exactly. And you're kind of constantly playing catch up. So that's oh, a really common thing as well. That's a really common one. 
Yeah, this is another really common one that I see. This is all still the first, the first. Point yeah, this is still about. point is, one. Yeah, point one. Um, doing the same thing day in day out, so having the same calories every single day, have, doing the same exercises, the same yeah. intensity every day, day in day out for months on end, yep. and expecting something to change. Mm-hmm. So your body is very good at adapting. So the whole your body's whole um, uh, point of existence is to keep you alive. Yeah. And it will do anything it can to do that. So if it sees that you're eating the same thing every day, same calories, doing the same, your body will adapt to that and your metabolism will adapt to that. So it's not going to, you're not going to continue to burn. You have to continually challenge your body, challenge your um, metabolism. So have days where you have high carbs or high calories, sorry, Mm -hmm. and then have low calorie days. Um, change up your exercise, so do some high intensity and yeah. then do some steady state cardio, mm-hmm. say, then do some resistance training, mm-hmm. that sort of thing. So um, that's a really common thing. Not You know, someone's under the um, care of, say, a trainer, mm-hmm. less likely to, yes, but if I they're think. trying to do it on their own, I do see these things very well, commonly. It's funny, we were just talking before we recorded about running and getting used to running. We yeah. were talking with, with Matt, who's behind the camera. And we're talking about running, and, and, and I remember my days of running. I started running in my 30s, mm. and I remember my goal was to run this 5K fun run that was at the gym there. And I remember when I finished running the 5Ks, I almost was felt like I was dying. Yeah. And it was like I ran five kilometres, and it's like – you know, now we were talking a bit before about running a marathon, which is 42 kilometres, and that was hard. Yeah. But now, like this morning I ran, it was only 8Ks, mm. but 5Ks is barely worth getting out of bed for for me now because yeah. in, in the past running 5Ks I would have burnt way more calories, struggled way more, and now yeah. I can do 5Ks. Even now I can do 5Ks yeah. in my sleep. Exactly. And when I was really fit at running, 5Ks would be like, now I've started to, you know, that's my warm-up done. Mm. It's seriously, you're right, it adapts to it. And mm. so if you're in the gym and doing the same weights mm. and you're getting stronger, those weights are going to become easier. That's right. Yeah. And so, you know, doing the same thing mm. is is not a good thing. You've got to challenge yourself. You've got to yeah. step it up, step it down, step it over sideways, do all the – I'm a big fan of that too. Yeah. yeah. I can swim K and a half quite easily. Yes. But, you know, there, there are people who go to the pools that do 400 metres and they're exhausted at the end of it. Mm. And for them, that's tough. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, all about adaptation. So you've got to continually challenge your body. Yeah. And and going like like the, the, the Grant Hackett's from the old days, I know Grant, mm. um, you know, he, he's – the 1500 meter specialist mm. and he would train he would do like like six kilometers in a session yeah. now if i did six kilometers i'd burn way more calories than him because i'd be there all freaking day doing that yeah, exactly. you know he'd do it in a little hour or two session you know yeah. what i mean yeah. and so absolutely you're absolutely correct on that one yeah so i just wanted to get those out of the way yeah. because they're things that people think oh yeah but but oh, there's so- one more you got to get out of the way oh did i miss one did i you did there's one about the wrong diet. For your oh, I current. did, I did, I did miss yeah. that one. Yes, the wrong diet for your current health status. Yeah. So, and this is going to move more into sort of two to five, the next yep. the next points. But if you've got underlying issues, say gut issues, which is going to be what we're going to talk about in a minute, and you're taking in, say, a, you're on a ketogenic style diet, yep. and you're feeding bacteria that are already overgrown, mm. and we're going to talk about those bacteria and what they can do, that's definitely going to impact your ability to lose mm. weight. So, um, you know, if you're on a particular diet and you're not losing any weight, you're not feeling good, it's probably not the right diet for where you're at in your health status at that point correct, in time. Correct, correct. So you want to sort of change that up. So I see, and people will persist no matter how uncomfortable they are and how little progress they're making, they will persist because they've read that this is the best diet for weight loss and yeah. like, but it hasn't helped you. So why I keep know. going with it? I know. Yeah. And, and the calories in, the calories out thing with, with these diets is, is quite remarkable because you've seen my nuts, right? Yes, Steve. And, and I eat a lot of them. Now, they have super high in calories. <laughs> Nick, I didn't mean those no, ones. Steve, I don't I mean know. my bag, you know, big. Yeah, you Container you know, it's nuts. like I buy them by the kilogram. Yes. Okay. And I eat loads of nuts. Now, they're yeah. super high in calories. Now, according to our, our mate who says calories in, calories out, I should be morbidly yeah. obese. Yes. Why That's aren't right. I? That's right. Because I eat loads of these nuts. Yeah. Exactly. And they're all, they're, they're high in calories. They're high in calories. So and yes. so I, I can, no problem because that's good for me. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So you've got to have, you've got to go with what works best for you. And everybody's different and not one diet fits all. Nope. That's definitely if true. If it did, I'd go, here you go, bye. That's and right. And I'd give you my list of things you've got to eat and then you'd be fine. Exactly. It doesn't work because people go, oh, I don't like eating broccoli and all this sort of stuff. And and foods react differently to people. Yeah, that's exactly right. One man's food's another man's poison. Poison, exactly. So so there you go. So that's number one. So we just want to get those off yeah, the table right, yeah. to get say them, if anyone yeah. that's like, oh, but I do, oh, maybe I do do that. Maybe I yeah. should look at 
what I'm eating on the weekends and things like that. Yep. So that's number one. So now we go into the really good one, Steve. Yeah, now we're getting into it. Number two reason you may not be able to lose, may not be losing weight, poor gut health. My yeah. favorite subject. It does. It changes. People got different guts. Yeah. So this whole calories in, calories out thing. If you've got high methanobrevibacti, which mm-hmm. is the one that draws calories if you're starving. Yeah. And, you know, because this got to remember, going back years ago, our biggest problem is starvation. That's right. We're not, not so much obesity in the Paleolithic days. Mm. So, so what our body would do would adapt by growing more of these bacteria that when you eat a food, it would draw more calories out of it. That's right. So if you've got loads of those bacteria, the methanobrevibacti, those sort of ones, mm. and firmicutes, you will grab more calories out of the food. Yeah. So that's another hole in the... You know, calories in, calories out, crap. But, yeah. but I think we've done podcasts and it's showing how bad that is. I'm not saying that, you know, I, I know nothing about loads of things, and um, but, but you know, I've done – this is pretty obvious. This yeah. one, isn't it? The gut. Well, the thing that makes me mad is because a lot of these people are um, very, 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 very clever in their field, very mm. clever, um, you know, like exercise science, all that sort of thing, can't fault them. But they don't see the population of people that are – I see – yeah. So, or, or that health practitioners see that have underlying issues yep. that are creating the problem, and they're just seeing that they're not they're not doing what they're told. So, yeah. which is entirely not the case. So that gets my bug. But anyway, yeah, poor gut health. So um, there's a lot of reasons why mm-hmm. you will, that that um, that are impacting your gut that can contribute to weight loss, resistance, or even weight gain in some mm-hmm. instances. So, SIBO. It's yep. a big one, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, wow. very similar to um, EMO, so intestinal yep. methanogen overgrowth with your uh, methanogens, as yep. you said, Steve-O. Um, so that's when you have sort of higher amounts of these bacteria in the small intestine that shouldn't be there. That should be more into the large intestine. Mm. Um, so then you're taking in your calories and then you're, these bugs are sort of extracting some of the calories and breaking down, fermenting mm. these um these calories in your small intestine where it's supposed to be happening in your large intestine. So and you can absorb food in the small intestine. You can absorb yeah. soup in the... Wow. Yeah, so that could be um, a reason, one of the reasons why, SIBO-wise. Another one, you get a lot of bloating and a lot of fluid retention, like you can do with SIBO as well. So yeah. that can feel like fat gain when it's actually fluid and, and oh, bloating, which God. we can talk about. I've, I've, you know, occasionally I get bloating and... And geez, it feels. And I jump on the scales, and it's not. I haven't put a weight on, but yeah. you feel horrendous. Yeah, and I, this is another thing. And this is this is not a podcast on social media, but I feel like it just seems Go to for always it. be it's something happened. coming up. Um, you see a lot with with women, and they they'll take a photo of their their stomach in the morning, and then their stomach in the evening, and oh, they're quite yeah. bloated by I've the end that. of the day. And they say this is this is normal. This is what being a woman is like. Yeah. You know, don't, don't sh- and you don't shame it at all. Definitely, but it's not normal. You shouldn't be quite bloated by the end of the day no. you den- generally you, you know you will you will be a little bit heavier obviously at the mm-hmm. end of the day but you shouldn't be significantly bloated at the end of the day so that's no, of indicating a, some sort of gut issue going Absolutely. on there so um so yeah so that's not normal i know i mean i look at girls online all day and um Sometimes they've got <laughs> Nick. Nick, it's, it's, this is all for science. <laughs> of course, so, so, of course. No, no, I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. it, and and there, there's some funny ones on there that, and and I've seen some of the advice that some of these uh, women who who do a personal trainers, mm. and you're a personal trainer, so I'm not having a dig, but personal training, yeah. but but they don't do a lot of nutrition training. And no. you can tell. Well, they're not actually allowed to give nutritional advice right. for, um, in Australia, for trainers yeah. unless they have nutritional qualifications. So, yeah. so there in itself is, can be a little bit dicey. But, um, but yeah, SIBO and then obviously um, CFO, so small intestinal fungal overgrowth. <laughs> well, I well. don't remember all these acronyms. And le- like all these acronyms, LIBO, so Lib- large intestinal ba- uh, fungal overgrowth. So you can wow. eat and things like that. Yep. Candida definitely can cause a lot of inflammation. What, what's IMO? Emo, so intestinal methanogen overgrowth. Oh, that's the one. Yeah, that okay. used to be called SIBO M. Yeah, but now that's it's right. Emo. Yeah, okay. I'm going to eat yeah, those acros. Yeah, so so any of that sort of dysbiotic environment that's small and large intestine, whether it be fungal or bacterial, can significantly impact your ability to lose weight. Usually, you know, I've seen competitors who, um, after they've finished competing, guys and girls, mm. you know, have a have go and have cheat meals, and they're put on like 20, 30 pounds in the yeah. American scale now. They don't eat 20, 30 pounds of food. So the whole calories in and out, another busted myth there. Yeah. Because they go, oh, they were, but no, no, calories in, calories out, mate. Yeah. This is you're all about you. Mm. Then they, they didn't eat 
you know, 10 pounds of food that yeah. night. Yeah. You know, 20 pounds of food. Mm. You can't eat 20 pounds of food in one sitting. Sure I know this. Give it a go. No, this guy I don't called know what's Randy. A pound in kilos. Randy. Oh, sorry. Two and a half pounds is 2.2. Two. Okay, 2.2. Yeah. So, so there's a guy called Randy Sortel, and he's a competitive eater. And he can eat up to seven pounds of food. And that's a monstrous amount of food. Oh, what's that, 14 kilos roughly? No, it's three kilos. Oh, three roughly. kilos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I did the wrong way. Think, think of those big, those big round um, things at the gym. They're, they're yeah. twenty kilo things. A they're forty four pounds. Aware. Plates, <laughs> yeah, yeah they're forty pounds. They're forty four yeah. pounds. Okay, forty four pounds. So, so three kilos. Okay, that's a lot. It's a lot of food in one hit, isn't it? Oh, you know, like I, I, I've eaten a kilo steak before. Yeah, and that almost killed me. Well, what do they say? You, your stomach can hold two liters. Is yeah. it two to four? Two to so, four liters. Yeah, it stretches. <laughs> stretches. So. I don't know what he, his is different because he can eat a lot. Yeah, well, they've trained themselves. You've got to, to look them. at this guy. He's he's That's absolutely crazy. amazing yeah, what he can know. eat. And most of those competitive eaters, a lot of women, and they're tiny. He's not Skinny tiny. little thing. Oh, he's a big guy. He's a big guy. Yeah. And then he goes through a sexification where he goes on these, I'll call them extreme diets, where he trims down. Oh, well, there you go. Not healthy, but that's his job. Yeah. You know, so we talked about Christian Bale before, how he goes yeah. from super lean to super fat. Yeah. Um, and and for the for the role. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's people who do these extreme dieting that yeah. are not necessarily bodybuilders. No, not overly healthy long But, term, you know, like that. like going down this list here, and you said Paul Cutter, what about bile? What's yeah, bile? Yeah, so bile, bile, doing? bile production or bile yeah. flow yeah. Um, can definitely impact your ability to lose weight. Wow. Um, so we need bile to digest our fats. Yep. Effectively, it's also antimicrobial. So if you've got yep. poor bile flow and you don't have that antimicrobial effect of the bile in the small intestine, you can then develop SIBO. Yep. So there's that. It's also um, involved in blood regular uh, blood sugar regulation. Mm. So if you you're not getting that bile flow, it's going to impact your ability to um, regulate your blood sugars. Um, so and obviously. Um, absorption of your fatty uh, central fatty acids as well so and then if you have nutrient deficiencies that can impact your weight as well yep. i see quite a few clients that have um, issues with bioflow bio production bioflow they get a lot of bloating they get a lot of weight loss resistance mm -hmm. all of that sort of thing and we start to get their bile moving better and producing yep. more bile and they their bloating goes they start to lose weight so that can definitely impact your ability to um, lose weight as well so if you're not wow. having efficient bile flow or bile production yep so so that could be like if you've had the gallbladder out yeah then, then yeah. the gallbladder stores bile and then excretes it when it's needed yeah but if you had it out they they just extend the duct to the small intestine so it just dribbles out all day and all night yeah. so that's got to impact weight then yeah i you know? see a lot and of I know patients gall, gall, with gall, no gallbladder yeah and gallbladder does cause weight gain a yes. lack of a gallbladder. Lack of gallbladder can do, yeah. yeah. So, so that's, that's a risk that's factor. So, so again, calories in, calories out. Getting rubbish there, of course. Yeah. Make any We're having a go at this, got made yours. But <laughs> but, it, but it's just because there's so many reasons that that yeah. Um, you know. Yeah. yeah. Constipation is another one. Now, constipation is more than what you think. Because constipation, people think you hang on to your poo, therefore you weigh more. But it's not. It's more than that, isn't it? It's got it to do with beta glucuronidase and beta estrogen. Beta glucuronidase levels and things and estrogen. So we the, we do have bacteria in our gut that produce beta glucuronidase. Yep. And that's there to to sort of um, reactivate the conjugated estrogen if yep. we need it. So it yep. helps to sort of regulate the levels in our body. So if we have constipation, we're not excreting our excess toxins mm -hmm. and our excess estrogens and things like that in our stool. Um, it sits in the small intestine. It can, re it can reabsorb mm -hmm. and um, it can increase these uh, beta glucuronidase levels. It breaks down your estrogen and then you have more circulating estrogen, yes. which we're going to talk about hormones yeah, we're, in one we're, of the points. I know there's a big one coming up, but hormones yeah, play a but role. Estrogen, you can end up having that estrogen estrogen dominant symptoms or signs and then um they can impact your weight loss issues that impact your weight ability to lose weight there as well so yeah. constipation alone and obviously constipation is a symptom of an underlying cause anyway so mm. there's obviously more going on in the gut so that's another gut derived reason why <sighs> so many gut problems high What's amounts of pro-inflammatory uh, pro um bacteria that produce something called hexa lps so hexa. lipopolysaccharides yeah, we've talked yeah. about them before as well so mm -hmm. um, produced by uh, proteobacteria um so these ones can cause intestinal inflammation yep that can then impact our uh, gut barrier protection and our mm -hmm. gut barrier function that can breach you know break down a gut barrier breach that um that barrier and go into our Bloodstream yep. cause inflammation. Yep. Inflammation, which we didn't put in specifically, but inflammation will definitely impact your ability to lose weight because it impacts your mitochondrial function, so many different things. Yeah. 
So that, having that sort of dysbiotic um, picture with that inflammatory, it's called inflammatory dysbiosis, so yep. a lot of these LPS-producing bacteria in the gut will definitely impact your ability to lose weight as well. We've just gone through some of the list. Do, do any of your the people, as people you talk about in social media, do they talk about any of this stuff when it comes to calories in, calories out? <laughs> no, they don't. They don't mention it, do they? They don't. Why? Because I don't know it. Yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know it. So, um, so yeah, so... Um, High LPS. And interestingly, high fat diet. So say, so this is what I was talking about at the start yep. with the wrong diet for you. So say you're on a ketogenic diet because yep. you've been told that's the way to go. You'll lose weight. Everyone's mm-hmm. great. So you're having all these high fats. Um, high fat diets promote the uh, proliferation of LPS producing bacteria. Especially bad fats. Yeah, that's yeah. right. So you're going to be increasing those, those LPS mm. um, producing bacteria, creating more intestinal hyperpermeability, which then creates inflammation, which then leads to weight loss resistance. And, and we haven't even got to cortisol and hormones yet, have we? We haven't got to. We're, we're, gonna, we're, we're still in the gut. I know. Gut. But, but cortisol is released when inflammation so That's just right. keep, keep so that in mind. I'm going to give you a bit of a tie-in at the end of all of this, actually, yeah. if you remind me, Steve, you because we're going to make ones. a point about our human body yes. at the end of this. Yeah. So, um, so listen in. So this is an interesting one which people may not think about. Um, high amounts of BCA, so branched-chain amino acid producing bacteria. Wow. Because we have bacteria in our gut that will produce branched-chain amino Correct. acids. And if we're producing a lot of them, it can impact our insulin sensitivity mm-hmm. um, and create metabolic issues. Yes. So too if much BCA. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So if you're producing too many of these bacteria, have a dysbiotic um, you know, environment and mm. you're producing a lot of them, you can end up with um, insulin Resistance, Yeah, sure. And that's coming from the gut. Yeah. So people think, oh, no, it's just, you know, it's, well, I'm not eating too much sugar. Well, yes, but your gut bacteria mm-hmm. are contributing. Um, so that's a really interesting one. It's a very interesting one. Yeah. Um, so keep an eye out for that one. Mm-hmm. And then high antibiotic use. We all know that. Um, yeah. The classic side effects is destroying your gut. Yeah. And there's so many studies around oh, um, yeah. children that are given um, antibiotics, obviously, when they're young or even pre Pre-birth, so yeah. you know, uh, mothers have to have antibiotics. Um, those children can go on to have obesity later in life. Mm-hmm. So because it's changing that microbiome. So, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, um, and this is another one. Interestingly, and I see this a lot. I see people that clients that say, "But I just eat a, if I go even a little bit over my calories. So I'm on very low calories, and I eat just a little bit over. I just put on weight straight away. So that could be because of your gut bacteria as well. So you want to have yeah. a look at that. So. Gut health is really important when we're looking at um, metabolic health and weight loss. So, yeah. like I said, if you are struggling to lose that last 10, 5 um, kilograms or you have a lot more to lose and you're not losing anything, gut health can be a really significant driver. Absolutely. Now, let's say you've been starving yourself for a competition and you yeah. go out there and eat, eat a bit of food and people put on loads of kilos. That 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 ties into what we're talking about. Yeah. It talks about the, the methanobrevi uh, overgrowth. Then you get the, the the high amounts of calories of, of you know carbohydrates, and you eat say a couple of pounds of food and put on ten pounds. Yeah. Or put on eat a kilo of food and you put on five kilos. Yeah. Very common. Yeah. So that that blows out the calories in, calories out thing That's again. Right. Yeah. But it just shows you that this can have an amazing effect. Yeah. Now number three is huge. Number it's three ab- is huge. We could talk about this for hours. We could, I don't and know I'm sure people gonna... are probably yeah. aware of this one, but stress does impact your ability to lose weight and it can cause weight gain yep. and weight loss resistance. So, Absolutely. So there's, I mean, where, where do we even start oh, with, with stress? Go for it. Start from the top there. Well, chronically high cortisol. So we, we want to stipulate like we do in every podcast, acute stress, completely different. Yep. Short-term stress, really, really beneficial for the body. Yes. Long-term chronic stress, that's when we run into problems. Big problems. So chronically high cortisol will impact our body in a lot of different ways. Um, so some of the things that can happen when we have high cortisol is um, causes uh, gluconeogenesis. Yeah, we better break down what that is. That's, yeah. the, that's the making of new glucose yeah. from our muscle tissue. That's right. So like, let's say you, you know, you're, you're three million years ago and you're getting chased by a lion. Mm-hmm. Okay, you want sugar in your blood. That's right. I wouldn't give a you shit about breaking out a bit of muscle. Of you got to you got to go for it, mm. and then the stress is over, yeah. or you either dead or you survive it. Mm. So that's a short term stress. Yeah, and then you're not stressed anymore because you're back in your healthy cave and you, you're away from the lions. Mm. So, but but what we're finding in today's side is we're being chased by lions twenty four seven. Twenty four seven. Yeah, this is great book, and I don't know the author, so I'm really apologise if I'm not crediting the person, but. There is a book called um, Why Zebras Don't Get Ulcers. 
Oh, I remember that book. I <laughs> yeah. read that in a geez, long time ago. Yeah. 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 Basically, it's it's showing that acute stress, this is the physiological reactions we have to stress are to save our life. Yes. So a zebra, and that's basically saying a zebra, they live in a dangerous environment, a stressful oh, yeah. environment. There's always predators waiting to kill them. But is, are they stressed all the time? No. Well, I mean, no one's probably ever asked the zebra, I suppose, but they don't, they, they have the short-term stress. They might get chased. The stress is there. All these reactions happen. Wow. That's to get them away, to keep them alive as yep. best you can. And then everything calms down. The stress goes away, then goes back to normal oh, again. I haven't asked so, a zebra um, that. Oh, there we go. So it's by Robert M. Sapolsky. There oh, right. And it's all about stress response. Stress response. It's funny because the only thing I've ever asked a zebra is, why the long face? <laughs> That's a joke. Oh, that's a joke. Yeah. joke. I know there's more zebra jokes than yeah, that. I know. There's that's plenty of zebra jokes. jokes. Though, anyway. I know a real one, but I can't say it. Can't say that one. Um, um, so gluconeogenesis says break down muscle sugar. Now, yeah, yeah okay, sugar goes into your blood, mm. but it doesn't go back to your muscle. It doesn't. No. It goes into fat. It does. Yeah, so, so if you're not you, going to utilise it, it's going to go to your fat stores. Correct. Um, it reduces your insulin sensitivity. Yeah, of course it does. So more inclined to more that insulin resistance picture. Yeah. So it means you, you, you can't get rid of the sugar in your blood. Yeah. It's quick. It's pre-diabetic. It causes exactly. all sorts of advanced glycosylating products. It's shit. It's awful. So yeah, what's the next that. one? Reduces your growth hormone. Uh, so growth hormone we know is so fantastic. So good, so yeah. many things of muscle building, mm. you know, um, keeping you nice and lean, all that sort of thing. And your T3. T3, the active thyroid hormone. Yeah. So you get rid of that. Yeah. And that's bad because it turns it turns T4 into reverse T3. Yes. So it blocks your thyroid function. Yeah, it renders it inactive. Yeah. Yeah. So you Something don't have like enough it. T3 floating around. Your, your metabolism system. drops. Yeah, exactly. Impacts impacts your metabolic Jeez. function, definitely. Stress thing sucks. Yeah, so it reduces it reduces it reduces, re- yep. reduces and reduces. Reduces and reduces. <laughs> we haven't had lunch yet, Steve. Um my my mouth's not working properly. Um reduces your immune Immunity, obviously, yeah. and um, it increases infl- inflammation. So it yeah. increases your inflammatory response. We talked about inflammation has a lot of mm. um, systemic effects. One being it can impact your ability to lose weight or to it burn fat. It drives more cortisol release. That's right. So it becomes a vicious cycle. Oh, okay. um, yeah, so uh, – and it turns off the switch that um, controls leptin as well. It does. Yeah. Because you've got to remember that, that leptin is a hormone released from your fat cells that yeah. tells you to stop eating. That's right. Okay, so if you've got loads of fat, you're supposed to stop eating. Mm-hmm. But if you haven't got that response, and a lot of people are overweight are stressed, mm. then they don't get the message to their brain, so they keep eating. That's right, yeah. It's a terrible situation. Yeah, a lot of obese people have re- leptin resistance, yeah. which then, you know, they don't get that off We could do a podcast on le- leptin. On That's terrible stuff. So very inflammatory too for your joints. and Yeah. Bad for, it causes arthritis. Yeah, it's awful. awful. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, so it also impacts your progesterone production. So this is going to oh, this is going to merge into our hormonal stuff that we're going to talk wait, about. You wait till we talk about sex hormones. Sex hormones. I've got some babe, doozies for you. Yeah, I found a couple of studies. Oh, excellent! I can't wait. Really, really interesting studies that, yeah. that you wouldn't have used it for this, but yeah. you'll be surprised. Oh, I, can't I think wait. I think you'll That's be surprised. Coming up next. Yeah. yeah. So so stress will impact your progesterone production. So you have lowered progesterone levels. That's going to create an estrogen dominant picture again. Yep. Um. So whether your estrogen is high or not, we've gone through this before. It's yep. The, it's the ratios. Yep. Um. So that's definitely going to then cause um can cause some weight gain because of that estrogen dominance. Um, and then higher estrogen or estrogen dominant picture yep. can impact thyroid function, Does, so it yep. can suppress our thyroid function mm-hmm. as well. Um, uh, progesterone is that calming hormone. Yep. So um, we've got lose that sort of gabinergic effect of progesterone, which is that nice calming um, effect. So we get more anxious, which mm-hmm. activates our stress response further, mm-hmm. which then creates a vicious cycle again. Mm-hmm. So um, so that's another reason that that stress can do um, mitochondrial function can be impacted by stress. Mm-hmm. So we talked about the mitochondria before. We've talked about the mitochondria in other podcasts. There are little energy centers, like little batteries. They produce mm-hmm. our energy. So if we have stress, then that causes that inflammatory effect. Inflammation will impact our mitochondria. If they're not functioning well, then we can't produce our energy and then we have in, um, ongoing effects from that as well. Mm-hmm. So um, mitochondrial function is super important for our <sighs> fat loss as well. Yeah. And energy, yeah. Yeah, and then reduced digestive function. So um, from our uh, SNS, central nervous system activation. Yep. So we, um, 
we've talked about this before as well. So lowered acid and enzyme production mm-hmm. in the gut because of that that stress response. So then that's going to lead to gut issues, Tissues, which then goes back yep, to the gut invasion. that we talked about before. Yeah. So um, another thing, one thing other stress does is it stops you sleeping. Yes. A lack of sleep causes weight gain. It does. Mm. Proven. Yep. Yeah. Impact, it, it affects your leptin levels as well. That's why people eat more and they eat more sugary foods. There's a lot of research on that as well. So it impacts your, stre- uh, your sleep. So yeah. stress, horrendous. And people, you know, people say, but I'm doing all the right things. I'm exercising and I'm t- t- dieting yeah. and I'm all these things, but they don't factor in the stress no. and how impactful that can actually be. And even the stress of the fact that they're dieting and not losing weight is stress in itself. Very much so. And that's increasing it, which is then perpetuating the problem. Oh, and mainly women put a lot of pressure on yeah, themselves. Yeah, mainly women, because women are the ones that struggle more with weight loss, and that's not entirely our fault. That's our hormones a lot of the time. Well, we're just about to get to that. It's a good segue. So, yeah, but so but men, men don't stress about their weight as much. They seem to have this. One thing I don't like about men um, is that they, they seem to accept being overweight. And, and you hear it. They go, oh, yeah, I'm really fit. I used to play soccer. I've just got a bit of a gut. Yeah. Well, that's fat. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm coming from a female perspective and I might get shot down for this. I don't okay, know. Okay. You're but, in trouble. Well, because, you know, females have a lot more pressure on them. In social media, yeah, women, women have to look a certain way. They do. They're not accept, it's not acceptable no, to be anything other than perfect if yep. you're a female. But a ma- they don't, male doesn't have, they don't have that stigma no. and they don't have that pressure, which is like, it's really difficult for women. You know, they get shot down a lot and I have to say by a lot of other women, more so oh, than yeah. anything else, shoot them yeah. down their men. But... The, pro- the social pressure to look a certain way for women is ex- extreme and that's why women go to a lot of these extreme reasons. But men don't seem to feel – I mean, look, there's probably men out there that do. I don't want to ju- you know, be um, gross generalisation, but less pressure, I would say. Absolutely. You know, because women the, – the men might not be – you know, super fit, super amazing, but women don't seem to care so much. In my that. age demographic, 80% of me of my age group are overweight. Yeah. That's horrendous, it is horrendous for their health. Yeah. Men need to grow up and take responsibility for themselves and not, mm. not, not say, oh, I've got a bit of a dad bod. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that's probably going to give you a heart attack. Yeah. You know, whatever a dad bod is, there's nothing yeah. scientific about that. But being overweight will increase the risk of diseases for you, yeah. terrible for your prostate, terrible for your heart disease. Mm. The, the, you've, you've, you've got to take responsibility for yourself yeah. and your own health. You, you know? do. You Men do. need to stand up. They, they do. Need to, they, yeah. they need to say, yes, I'm overweight and I'm going to do something about it. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, the, it, women, midlife women, so I'm now midlife, Steve-O. <laughs> it's, we, it's 27 midlife. 27 midlife. So, yes, I am officially midlife now. So, um uh, so menopausal women, yep. that sort of thing, they get downed all the time. Oh, well, they're old and fat. And that's why, you know, there's, ah. a, lot, there's a lot of divorces and things. Oh, well, they're old and fat. And I'm like, you know, come on. It's it's difficult. We're gonna, going into hormones now. Very difficult yeah, let's, for women. But, let's talk about But, hormones. yeah, women. Um, but So let's go into number four. Let's so, leave that. So now. hormones are really – and we're talking – focused on the sex hormones. We haven't talked about the weird ones, the leptins and the ghrelins and neuropeptide yeah. wise and all that crap. Yeah. But we're going to talk about sex hormones a second. You, the first one there is estrogen dominance. Estrogen dominance. So we're going to talk about ones that people probably know a lot about, yeah. but we have to put them in there because yep. they're a, a significant factor when we're talking calories in, calories out, yep. totally out the window. When our hormones are out of balance, it doesn't matter what you do, you're not going going to be losing weight if you have any of these issues. So estrogen dominance, as mm-hmm. I said before, could be high estrogen. Mm-hmm. It could be low progesterone and normal estrogen. It could be perimenopause where you have fluctuations, wild fluctuations mm-hmm. of your estrogens and your progesterone is slowly um, diminishing. Yep. Um, so any of these sort of situations are going to make it a lot more difficult to lose weight and you're going to be more inclined to gain weight. Yes, absolutely you are. Um, yeah. There's, there's incredible, a lot of evidence on this, and, and it, it goes like a U-shape, mm. um, the relationship um, um, between estrogen and weight in women. So if you've got very low at this end, mm-hmm. and you think of a, a U, mm. so you've got very low here, you're a high weight, you can, you're can risk of high weight. And then when it goes to a healthy thing, it actually is, you know, it keeps you nice and lean. Mm-hmm. But a high estrogen, the other end you're talking about, yeah. it gains weight as well. Yeah. So, that's so really, really important you keep really. healthy estrogen levels. Yeah. So as we said earlier, gut health will impact yep. your estrogen levels. Um, so that's a, that's a factor. Um, you know, stress. Yep. So we're going to see a theme here. But, um, but yeah, so estrogen dominance. So that's for, for um, premenopausal women that have estrogen issues, then that they have to address that. Generally, you'll see it's progesterone, um, mm. estrogen progesterone issues. Perimenopause, as I said, is completely different because you're losing your progesterone and you're getting these wild fluctuations mm-hmm. of your estrogen, which is going to be causing all sorts of problems. And then postmenopausal, you have 
pretty much no estrogen, very, very low estrogen. Mm. So you'd say, well, estrogen dominance, you have weight gain. So why would you have weight gain with low estrogen? Mm. So it's the fact that you have low estrogen, low progesterone postmenopausally that then you have more that androgenic effect. You get that weight gain around the middle, that type of thing. You become um, more um, insulin resistant Mm -hmm. because you're losing that um, protection from the estrogen. So it's quite insulin sensitive um, estrogen. You're getting higher androgens, which can make you more uh, insulin um, resistant. Um, that ratios right out, and you also lose the um, the calming effect of the progesterone. Yep. So you're more inclined to react to stress much easily, much more easily. Sorry, mm-hmm. which then obviously goes back to that stress response. Stress response, yeah. So postmenopause, and that's why women put on weight postmenopausally because the, everything's just thrown out of whack. They're more insulin resistant. They're more reactive to stress, and they have more androgenic picture. Yep. So you have to balance all of that out. Um, so that you can maintain your weight or lose that weight postmenopausally. Absolutely. There's a great paper on this, and it goes through. It was published in 1998, so I didn't mm-hmm. just use old papers. This is a seminal paper. And, and it talked about, um, it's called The Influence of Sex Hormones on Obesity Across a Female Lifespan. Mm-hmm. And it talks about everything you say. So if you want to look up that paper, it's really important yeah. because it talks about the hormones, menopause, all this sort of stuff and the hormones. Mm-hmm. And there was one other study that I found that I, I found kind of interesting to talk about. And, and this is a... a, a controversial one, a controversial topic. So I, I, I don't, you know, I don't want to buy into that, but I want to talk about it for the for the sake of this. Mm. And and this, the study is titled Cross-Sex Hormone Therapy in Transgender Persons Affected by Total Body Weight, Total Body Fat, Lean Body Mass. It's a meta-analysis. Mm. So what this is a study on is that the women that transition to be a man or a man that transitions to be a woman. Mm. Okay? Yeah. Now, okay, whatever you want to do, but be aware that if you get the wrong hormone – or when I said the wrong one, let's say you wanted to be a man and mm-hmm. you got testosterone, the chances are you'd put on weight. Yes. But if you give testosterone to me, the chances are I'd lose, lose weight. weight. Yeah. But if you give me estrogen, yep. I would gain weight. Yeah. And if you have estrogen, if you're low in estrogen, yeah. then you would, you'd be fine. That's right. So it's really interesting how the wrong hormone does the wrong thing for the wrong person. Yeah. Again, puts another hole in the whole calories in, calories exactly. out crap. It, but yeah. very interesting. It is very interesting. And the, the numbers are here too. It gives you really interesting numbers you know you, you put on like 3.9 kilos and all that sort of stuff and yeah really it's quite significant quite significant and again yeah. this is a major big study yeah so very interesting it is very I interesting. found that that's the study very interesting because yeah they, well i mean i mean you look at women and, and men so you look at a woman postmenopausally, she yeah. gets the belly fat mm-hmm. um whereas before she'd get the hips hips but thighs it's yep. the estrogen and the boobs and the boobs don't forget the boobs don't forget the boobs so you get bigger boobs so yeah, i guess no. the estrogen but, Yes, anyway. <laughs> so, and then postmenopausally, you lose that estrogen, but you're, so then your androgens become, um, you know, higher ratios are out. It's not that you're specifically getting higher androgens, but you're getting more androgenic. So you get that belly fat, which is the, what the male a, fat. Male fat. And then men, if they, um, which we didn't talk about, low testosterone, it could be aromatizing to estrogen, yep. they'll get more around the hips, butt, thigh area. And so the they boobs. get more, and the boobs. So they get more that female um, yeah. type fat. Um, deposition picture. So it's interesting the Very way the hormones work. Yeah. Well, that's why. Like, if, if I took super physiological hold of the estrogen, I would, I would grow breasts. Yeah. You know, my fat tissue would grow there. Mm. Um, so it's very interesting that how, how hormones have an amazing effect on the body. Huge effect. And I think that's very frustrating for a lot of women that, that, again, are trying everything and they're not losing weight. And I'd be looking at, you know, obviously some of the things we're talking about, but hormones so powerful and really can impact yeah. women so negatively and because we go through so many different hormonal phases in our life so puberty obviously then our pre premenopausal then our perimenopausal then our menopausal i mean the hormonal fluctuations throughout those stages are hugely significant and that's where we can have so many weight issues throughout any of those stages <sighs> it's huge now yeah. now number five this is a bit out of left to center this, this is left to center but it's research well yeah i love it it's, it's about Toxins, yeah. and so it's a broad term. But there's a term of toxins. There's a lovely name for them. Yes, that the ones that put on weight. You remember what they are called? Obesogens. 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 Now, now, what does that tell you? Firstly, another hole in the calories in, calories out thing is if you're loaded up with obesogens, mm. then you're going to become, let me guess, obese. Yes, exactly. You know, it's not like um, you know, it, it really is a, a handbrake on your health. Yeah, definitely. And I put toxins in because yeah. you know, we're talking about maybe a population of people that have tried everything, like I said, they're maybe just 10 kilos over or they just, they've tried everything and they can't lose weight. Um, Look to something like environmental toxins. 
So and obesogens uh, that could be that could have a huge impact on your ability to burn fat. Yeah. So obesogens are chemicals that disrupt the body's normal um, homeostatic controls. Yep. Um, so uh, they're present in a lot of different things. So um, your skincare, yep. in your water, mm -hmm. in your plastic containers, in um, pesticides. So environment. So look, I a lot of times ask clients where they live or where they grew up. So mm -hmm. did you grow up in a farming area that did maybe aerial spraying or, you know, anywhere that you're in contact with pesticides and things like that? Um Cooking, cooking pans, pots oh, and pans teflon. with the Teflon That's, and yeah. the coatings and all of those sort of things. Yeah, so they can chemicals. all be um, obesogens or endo endocrine disrupting hormone oh, yeah. chemicals. And where, where, when I read this, this, this summary you wrote, guess how many endocrine disruptive hormones there are? It's over a thousand. Over a thousand. Yeah. So that what's that's what makes me laugh when they say BPA free, but oh, don't worry about yeah. the other two hundred chemicals yeah. in the plastic. You know that yeah. are having a very similar impact. I so. know. It's like it's it's like saying. Um, you know, I uh, don't worry, it, it's heavy metals free because it's free of mercury, which mm. is bad for you. Mm. But how many other heavy metals there are? There's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah, there's lots. There's 92 on the periodic table. All right, some of them are healthy for us, mm. the, the ones on the periodic table, but most of them, most of the elements on the periodic table are not healthy for us. No, they're not good. And so there's, there's, there's 92 of that, and they're elements. Yeah. They're not chemicals, they're joined together. It's, it's unlimited then. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you can have some some terrible one. Now, now there was a paper that, that's got a great extract there on a nice chart there on heavy metals and what that heavy does. Heavy metals, yeah. Isn't so, that remarkable? Yeah. So here we'll talk about what obesogens do first. So yep. what obesogens oh, can help yeah, to promote you to skip ahead of me there, Steve. Yeah, sorry. Um, so obesogens, they can increase the number of fat cells yep. in your body. They can um, increase the storage of fat in existing cells so they can swell your exist existing um, fat cells. Um, they alter the rate of your fat cell um, production versus destruction. Oh. So, so slow that destruction. And let down me guess, they don't, they don't. Yeah, they don't kill them more. No, no, they don't. They don't kill them bastards. all. So you end up storing more and losing, having yep. more and losing less. Um, they favour cal calorie storage yep. over utilisation. So you're using more again calories from your food. Um, they can change your metabolic rate. Wow. So how many calories your body actually needs to maintain your weight, it yep. can it can impact that level. Um, it alters your gut microbiota. As well, so back to the gut, um, and then it modifies your hormonal control. So leptin ghrelin um, yeah. levels as well can impact. So it changes those. your appetite. Yeah, it changes your appetite. So you know these people who can't lose weight because they're hungry all the time. Yeah, and eventually they buckle. Yeah, and they eat, they don't gorge on a bag of broccoli, do they? Yeah, no, they don't. Um, very rare. So, so this is incredible. These chemicals yeah. are everywhere. They're and, everywhere. And they're, Heavy they're, metals they're, are everywhere. Know, we're we're going to narrow it down. Oh, where do you get them from? There's thousands of them. It's so, amazing. so you know, about a thousand of them. So, so yeah. you, you can't avoid them. You can't avoid them. And that's why we say, you know, no to low tox living. But the, but it definitely is impactful. So, um, you know, and and I see a lot of this. I, I don't see it. I should say, shouldn't say that. I see less of this, but I still see it relatively commonly. Yeah. So people, and this can be um, a population that maybe have impacted liver function or uh, low liver detoxification ability through their phase one, phase two liver um, yep. channels. So they're, first of all, they can't, because we are exposed to a lot of chemicals every day. We take them in airborne chemicals in mm. our food, obviously all the, 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 um, the things we talked about, pans, containers, things like that, drink bottles. Mm. But our body has the ability to detoxify these to a large degree. So if we don't have... A, a op optimal liver function and also bioflow, as I said mm. before, they work together. Then that's going to cause a build up. It can cause a build up of a lot of these heavy metals as well in the, a lot of people. So that can be a reason why some people get um, heavy metal um, toxicity. Yeah, so now, now people know about heavy metals. Um, surely they know they've heard of mercury and yeah, lead. Yeah. Arsenic. Yeah. But there's loads of them. There's loads. I mean, arsenic you can get from a lot of, from having a lot of rice. Oh, God. But you wouldn't have thought about that. It's because yeah. um, it's sprayed and it's high yeah. in arsenic. So rice can be quite high in arsenic. So everyone's having a lot of rice. Obviously, mercury, if you're having a lot of seafood, or so the big fish, things like this. It's pretty easy to get mercury, a lot of these yeah. um, heavy metals. I think so. arsenic's in treated pine too. Yeah, it is in treated pine. Which is what you pine. use for, for, for building materials. Everyone yeah. does. Yeah, well, we oh, we built um, veggie gardens at home and they're made from treated pine. Sleeper pines, yeah. yeah. I, so I've I had to line on, them. Yeah. But you're lining with plastic. <laughs> So 
how do you win? You know, you can't okay, win. No. So you can't you can't avoid them. No. You can't avoid all these things. But that's why we want you know want to optimize all your detoxification detoxification channels. So liver function, kidney function. Um, you know, you want to make sure you're going to the toilet every day and, and emptying your bowels every mm. day. They're all tox- detoxification channels. So um, other environmental toxins are mold. Oh. I see this more and more and more. Like it's yeah. so it's becoming so so much more prevalent. We've had a lot of flooding over the last oh. few years in Australia as we well. Um, so that can have significant impact on your overall oh system. God. But weight loss is a is a really really common one. Oh, weight sorry weight loss resistance or even weight yep. gain weight gain yeah is a really um, really common. So. Um, obviously, it impacts your ability to detox as well. So, all the mold spores are systemically uh, causes leptin resistance. Now that means you, you you barely can control your eating. Yeah, you know you let, you, you don't switch off. No, you don't switch off. So that's wow. um, inflammatory causes a very significant inflammatory response, which, as I said, impacts obviously our mitochondrial function, activates our stress response, creates more inflammation, continual sort of cycle there. So moulds um, definitely is a, a big problem. So you know, heavy metals, moulds, environmental toxins can definitely be impacting your ability oh to lose God. weight. So that could be something to look into depending on your environment, where you grew up, what you're exposed to. That now, now if there's a study you, you're quoting here where in a Finnish study. Yes. Where they were exposed to mould, these people. Yes. And guess what percentage level of their thyroid level went down? Yeah. So this was quite significant. Up to 20% of them developed hypothyroidism that had the mould illness compared to 57 in the general population. Right. So, 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 you know, if, forget all this other stuff we're talking about, mm. weights and all that sort of crap. Mm. If you're exposed to mould and you get hypothyroidism, you're going to be much higher risk of putting on weight because your thyroid yeah. levels are dropped. That's right. You just got low metabolism. Yeah. Really low. You're really low. Yeah. And you feel like crap, you're mm-hmm. depressed, you're constipated and all this other crap, hairs yeah. falling out and terrible dry skin, but you're going to put on weight. Mm. So again, the other calories in, calories out, if you're exposed to mould, yeah. um, you're going to be it's not going to be calories in, calories out. I mean, and out. I've treated mold plate patients That's why I'm before. surprised that it's still in this 2023 where they we've yeah. seen these studies and all this sort it, of stuff. It blows my mind. It blows my mind that it's all calories in, calories out. So, And <sighs> the thing that I was going to say at the end, because that's our five five top, yeah. right? So we can't then take one of those out and go, well, it must be just your gut mm. or it must be just your hormones because our body does not work independently no. of the systems don't work independently of each other. We're one big machine. So if yeah. one system is dysregulated, it's going to impact every other system. So, you know, if we have gut issues, as I said, that can that can cause hormonal issues. Hormonal issues can impact the gut. It all, it all activates the stress response. It impacts our ability to detoxify. Therefore, we could have more buildup of chemicals and things. So you've got to look at the body as a whole. You know, some people say, well, it's obviously just your, I've got it. And I have, I have clients that say this, it's my thyroid, my thyroid's, out of whack that's why i can't lose weight i just need to fix my thyroid i'm like well it's not your thyroid that's the problem no. your thyroid is just reacting. a regulator yeah. and it's reacting to the environment so what's impacting your thyroid yeah. so then you've got to go through all these things so so what's the solution to yeah. all of this steve yeah i know this is the i mean it, it's very complex this mm. because we've painted a picture here where you know, like, like if, if, you know, if, if let's say you, you, you obese woman mm. gets their bloods levels, they're probably going to be high in estrogen because they, their fatless cells make yeah, estrogen. Cells so, so you could blame that as being a hormonal fat. Yeah. But it's no, it's yeah. the other way around. Yeah. So, yeah, what is the answer to this? I, I'm glad I'm not in practice anymore in a way because <laughs> this is complex shit. It is. Complex. Ha, ha, what, what, what test do you do? What, what can you do to help these people? So you want to say, I mean, you know, and we're not talking about someone who maybe just comes to me and says, I need to lose weight and I can't. So then we're yeah. going to look at their diet. Obviously, yeah. we're going to look at all the lifestyle factors, mm. the dietary factors, see whatever, the, everything that they're doing. Mm. Um, and then you're going to go a little bit further. So if we want to look at the gut, obviously, we're going to do some microbiome testing. Mm-hmm. So let's have a look what's going on there. Um, we can obviously do pathology, blood pathology, because we can check um, metabolic markers. We can check inflammatory markers, all of that sort of thing, to see mm-hmm. if we can get a pi- bit of a picture there. Organic acid testing. That's interesting. Yeah, it? it's really interesting. Yeah. Go, it'll tell you a lot about a lot of different systems in your body, um, toxic load, metabolic function, thyroid function, adrenal function, 
neurotransmitter levels, which we just didn't talk about, but that could be impactful yeah. as well. So that's another good investigative tool. Um, du- the Dutch test is really good for hormonal, hormonal looking stuff, into yeah. hormonal um, imbalances. Yep. Um, I love that one because it also looks at your cortisol and your cortisol patterns. 24 and hour cortisol, yeah. yeah, really good, accurate. Yeah, yeah and really cortisol good. Uh, and metabolites of cortisol. So when we're looking at cortisol levels, we don't want to just look at free cortisol. We want to look at the metabolites because that can impact, that can give us a really full picture of what's happening within yep. your body. Um, so the Dutch markers, uh, Dutch test is really good as well. So any of those functional tests to really have a really good look. Um, mycotox testing for mould um, infection. Um, there's, there's, you know, tests that we can do for looking at chemicals in the body. So you can test for mould. So you people can test think, for mould. Yeah. Yeah. So the organic acid test will give indications of mould yep. and then you can do mycotox testing, which is one step further. We can tell you what sort of moulds could be present. So we have a really a lot of really good tools in functional medicine to actually look into the cause of of these, um, and then we work from what you know what there what we find. So yeah, so so let, you know going back big picture here. Let, let's say somebody is you know look, if people are struggling with their weight, mm. it usually is their diet and exercise. Yeah, but there's these buts here, these five buts here that yeah. that if they are. Doing everything classically, quote, right. So if you're going through all our yep. first, the first point and yep. all of that's okay, you're not okay. doing any of the yep. things we mentioned first, then you've got to move on to, well, okay, so what is it? So is it any one of these other four points that could be possibly contributing? Yeah. Yeah. Remarkable. And even, even excessive dieting. Excessive dieting, yeah. Oh, that's one thing I didn't talk about. And even the exercise type, I didn't even talk about that. Oh, so even yeah. hormonally. So depending on your home, hormonal picture, and I, you know, it, like I said, the, the under eating and the over exercising is really common and it's yep. really common postmenopausally. I don't know if we get a lot of that people watching and listening, the postmenopausal or perhaps we do, but they're, they're trying to do what they did when they were 30 to lose weight. It doesn't work that way. So if you're going to do high intensity exercise, you're just going to be activating that stress response. You're going yeah. to be creating more insulin resistance. It, it's completely the wrong thing to do. Um, so you need to be to have, exercising, as I said in the start, it's just appropriate to your to where you're at and your health um, condition. Um, so that can be really impactful as well with what your how much exercise you're doing, how much diet you know. Like, as you said, if you're under eating, can be really impactful to um, for weight loss resistance. Yeah. Um, as I said, eating the wrong types of food could be the perfect diet, but eating the wrong food for what maybe is going on in your gut, yep. and that's going to impact it. So there's a lot of factors involved in it. It's not just calories in and calories out. No. There's a lot in it. So, <sighs> so if you are struggling with your weight and you're doing all the right things and things aren't budging, these these would be areas you might want to be looking into a little Isn't bit. Isn't it fascinating? Deeper. It's like, yeah. you know, I wish it was calories in, calories out. It'd Just be eat so less. Much easier, wouldn't it? And then you'd be fine. Yeah. And then we'd have a very lean population. But for decades, we've been told to eat less and move more. It hasn't worked. It hasn't worked. And it doesn't work. And it doesn't work for. Most people, you know, when you're young, yes, because you're more resilient, it can yep. do. But And that's the, the other theme. People say, but I did this, I've done this and it's worked in the past. Mm. Well, there's a reason why it doesn't work now. So you have to, you know, look at the underlying causes. Of that. Oh, God, so complex. It is complex. It so, is. And I'm a naturopath and it's complex. So, it is. So this is like, um, wow. Yeah. Nah, this is crazy stuff. But this has been really enlightening. I mean, I learned a lot from this podcast. I always do. But this is... Oh, scary. Mm, it is scary. So, yeah. But there's always hope. So if you're yep. struggling with your weight, there's always a reason and there's always ways you can address it. So you, so don't give up hope. Well, I'm going to go eat forward. some high-calorie high nuts. <laughs> you do that, Steve. I will. <laughs> okay. And we'll see you all next week. Yeah, see you guys. See ya. See ya.